Um, this is the BELP Library and Information Commons main website. This is probably very familiar to you if you've already started looking into research, um, looking for library resources. Before I kind of dig into the main page, there is a link that I want you to be very, very aware of, and in terms of bookmarking it, saving it, um, you can see my screen, right? You can see my mouse moving. Okay, if you can't, let me know. Okay, good deal. Um, so I'm going to click on the distance education link. And what this page is, this is a website that's completely dedicated to distance education students. So what it does is it's almost like a shortcut, um, a brochure that's just specific to you. So what I've included on this distance education page are all of the little nuances and all of the specific services that we have just for distance education students. Now, ideally, we do not see a difference between a distance education and an online student or on-campus student because you have access to exactly the same information. It just works a little different in the sense that you guys can actually have stuff mailed to you. So you can have books, DVDs, articles and all of that stuff mailed to your house for free whereas our on-campus students don't get that we actually do not deliver stuff to their dorm room they have to physically come to the library to get it and the way that that process works is i'm going to walk you through just to show you how you can get access to that information so on the main page you're going to get contact information um, you're going to get links to the distance education site to the University Writing Center, which is a very, very, very amazing resource, which I highly recommend that you use as well, because you can meet with them, they edit papers, they give you advice, they'll help you with citation. And especially in the particular program that you're in, Joe, you're gonna be doing an awful lot of writing. So take advantage of the University Writing Center because they're free and they'll work with you. Also, you guys within distance education are really big on smart thinking, which is a really awesome tutorial tool that they have that are specific to distance education. So we can totally um, uh, link to that so that you can access it as well. Now I just want you to notice on every page you're going to see a library reference chat. And if you're actually following along with me, in fact if you could open up the library website as you're watching me, we can go step by step on all the different ways to um, create it. So like maybe something you could do is just open up a box right next to me, go to the library website, and then just try it out. So here's the chat. Just to show you how quickly it works, the chats are monitored by all the librarians during the times that the hours that the library is open. Now something that we're actually working on is in the future is that we're going to, once the library closes, then students can still chat and they'll have access um, to libraries all over the state of North Carolina. So somebody will respond to your chat and will be able to help you. But for now, oh, see, hi, you said hello. Um, testing for student, thanks. That actually might have been Catherine who responded to that. So hi, Catherine, if, if you've just come in. Um, so this is a really good way, Joe, to get instant help. So say that you're accessing databases and you're having problems finding citation tools or you remember there was a distance education page, but you're not quite sure how to get there. Or maybe you're coming to visit campus and you want to know about the printing costs or if you can book a room of your own to study or to work on a project. Uh, the, the chats are really great. You can use them for all kinds of things. And so you'll find one of these boxes virtually on every page on the library website. So definitely use that because that is a good way to get instant help with any questions that you might have. Now on the main page, we do have a distance education orientation video. It is about three minutes long. So you can watch that. So again, this is the main distance education site. So um, for those of you just coming in, what I'm doing is I'm showing you guys how to access all of your information that you need through the library website. But ideally what I'd like you to do on your desktop is to open up you open up your browser as well so that you can follow along with me and so that you can also check out any other um, different types of uh, sites that you might want to be looking at that you may have some questions about. So because Joe came in first and he's an education major, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of focus my search on education. So again, this is the main page of the distance education site. Because you have the same access to the same information as on-campus students, yet you get it slightly differently, 
um, we've broken things down by tabs. So maybe you're just looking for books or eBooks or articles, or you've got some questions about e-reserves, or you're in the education department and you want to use the IMC. You may need uh, research help or citation help. Maybe you are a student across the state and you want to use one of the libraries near you, like UNC Chapel Hill or, or Pembroke, or if you're in Elizabeth City, um, you have access to all of these libraries as well. So like I said earlier, um, for those of you who are just coming in, feel free to raise your hand if you've got questions, uh, chat in your questions, and uh, interrupt me at any time, because again, I'm going to be showing you a lot of information. So right now, I just want to take you guys to the books tab, because the way we deal with books for distance education students is that we know that you guys physically can't come here and check out books. So we actually will mail the books to you. And this page shows you exactly how to do that. So if you were to watch this short video, it teaches you how to Welcome search to the Welcome to Searching catalog. the Library Catalog. This module will cover locating the catalog on the Belk Library website homepage, performing a basic search, and recognizing features of the library catalog. So this small video will walk you through how to find the books that you're looking for, in addition to the articles. Now, if you were to look over here on the left-hand side, these are the directions on how to get those books and DVDs sent to your house. So you can watch the video, or because I'm like a video person, I like to watch videos, but I also like to see step-by-step -step directions. You can do that as well, um, just by visiting this particular page. See, you guys got any questions? Okay, only on the phone. All right, Joe, I'm glad you're still here. Um, once again, there is that ever so present life or library chat box. So if you are reading all of this or you're watching the video and you still have questions, you're not quite sure what to do, you can type in here and chat and get an instant response to those questions that you're having. So for looking for books, you can't get any easier for this. And just as a as a side, as distance education students, yes, we do mail books to you, and it's for free. So what happens is you're going to get books, DVDs, whatever it is that you request out of the library. It'll be mailed to your house at no cost to you. You get a prepaid envelope or box to mail everything back, and you could just keep doing this back and forth um, as long as you're a librarian or as long as you're a student here at App State. So you can search the library catalog directly from this page as well. You don't have to go back to the main page and look at the app search box. You can look right here for books. And here's just some more basic questions on how the process works. So if you also, if you are a graduate student and you are needing books that we don't have, you can actually within this box, you can make requests through interlibrary loan. As we are members of the interlibrary loan process, that gives us access to hundreds of thousands of libraries in 180 different countries. So we can find dissertations, we can find books and materials that are not necessarily found here at Appalachian that you might need for your research. So again, it's, this is just a one-stop shop. This information is all over the library website, um, but what makes it easier for you guys is that it's all on one page, so you don't have to keep going to all those different sites. It will link you to where you need to go. Ebooks, we have thousands of ebooks, which to me, ebooks, books, they're the same. Um, it's just slightly different on how you view and access them. So if you were in the catalog and you come across the perfect book for your advanced accounting class and it's an e resource and you're like, whoa, I don't know how to do that, um, this page here will walk you through it. Also, we teach monthly webinars just like this one on how to use ebooks, how to down ebooks. So feel free to sign up for one of those as well. So if you use the guide and you're confused, chat, ask for help. If you're still confused, check out one of our webinars. Like I said, they're monthly basis and you'll be able to get all kinds of information on how to use the ebooks. But I will tell you that we have lots and lots and lots of ebooks on the subject of education. Um, so they're a really amazing resource. Don't be scared to use them just because they're ebooks. Uh, they're actually a lot cooler than book books in the sense where you can get citation tools, you can make notes, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with ebooks that you can't necessarily do with books themselves. Same applies to articles. Um, I have a lot of instructors who want students to, UK, you have to have five articles in your literature review and you have to have five books. Um, the reason why I made the tabs look the way they did is so that you can go straight for the books, you can go straight for the articles. It saves you time. 
as distance education students, most of you have full-time jobs, you have families, you have lives. The last thing you want to do is go through a 64 million Google hit search just trying to find five articles that you need for your paper. Um, so hopefully this will help you. There's usually some great how-to videos, like maybe you want to find an article from a citation or you want to know the best possible ways to use app search because it looks like Google, but it doesn't help like Google. So this is kind of a good video on how to access it. And there's also directions on how to get articles mailed to you. The way the articles work is that you put in the request for the articles and you'll get an electronic copy. So it takes anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, depending on where the article comes from, but it gets sent directly to your mailbox. So again, Here's that chat box in case you need help or you're not quite sure how to um, ask for these um, articles sent to you. By all means, use that. E-reserves, this link, a lot of instructors, including distance ed instructors, put their reserves on reserve. And what that means is that they take articles and they take books and they have them scanned here in the library and placed on the website. So if you're looking for, you've got your syllabus and your instructor's telling you, oh, I've got to take I got to read all these articles or these books. You can type in by the instructor or the class. Choose the class you're taking. Doesn't look like she's got anything reserved on this one. Ah, here we go. Um, here's all the titles and the format and how you can access this information. So you can actually click directly on this and then you can have that e-reserve sent to you. So this is a really great tool to use, especially in regards to distance ed, because um, as long as you've got an internet connection, you're good to go. Now, for many of you involved in the education department, you might be familiar with the Instruction Materials Center. I highly recommend that you guys come up here at least once. I mean, Boone's such a cool place to visit anyway, but if you are an education major, this room is available for you and you can reserve it. It's free and it's filled with every single possible arts and craft cool teacher thing you could ever imagine. And you can use it to create projects for your classes. You can create posters, you can create brochures, you can create whatever you want and it's for free as, as being a student here. So you want to reserve the room because it is pretty popular to use. But again, it's a pretty amazing resource. And you know, come up for the afternoon just to play with it and then check out the rest of the campus and the library. It's, it's just a lot of fun. Libraries in your area. Now this is really cool because as a member of Appalachian State University, you actually have access to all the libraries in the UNC system. So that's 17 libraries you have access to. So there's bound to be one of those major schools next to you already. This means you can take your ASU ID and you can walk into any one of those libraries. You can use their computer, you can use their printer, um, you can request materials, you can literally go in there and study. You don't have to drive all the way out here. Um, you also have access to several community college libraries as well. This is just a small list of them. Um, so you can take your ASU card and you can use it to borrow their materials. Now don't forget, you still have access to all of those materials as well through interlibrary loan, but hey, if you don't want to wait a week or 24 hours, you can just go to UNC or you can go to um, NC State and you can use their library and get everything right then and there. So it's a pretty awesome resource that we all share and we get other um, students from other schools that come up here and use our stuff. So definitely keep that in mind when you are doing your research or when you're, you know, wanting a trip and thought, well, hey, maybe I'll work on my homework, which I hope you don't, because if you're on vacation, you should be having fun and not thinking about work. But sometimes, you know, if the need is there, it's definitely available to you. Now, research help. This is a great link for you because, again, we have a lot of useful guides that we have created just specifically for the subjects that are being taught in the distance education program. Um, there is some really great videos on how to evaluate resources. Um, how to develop a thesis statement. This is really important stuff, especially when you're starting to do all your writing. Um, there's that ever-present chat box. Here's a link to more workshops. But what's really cool are what we call our wrap sessions. And I'll go into a little more detail about that. But the useful guides for research are pretty cool. So, you know, for education, there are all of these guides. There are some guides that are specific just to certain classes in education. There are some that are... Um, available 
based on specific subjects. So maybe you're working on your dissertation or your thesis and you want to get some information out of that, um, like how to do it, how to find the information, maybe to look at other dissertations that have been written. Uh, lots of useful information. What these guides do is they really take all of the information that's out there, whether it's out there in um, in internet land, whether it's one of our libraries, maybe it's from UNC State or UNC Ch um, Asheville, and it puts it all in one place. So like your distance education page that links everything distance education related, that English LibGuide is going to be everything English related. So you literally can just get information about your topic without having to go and look through everything. Now, citation help is always very important. Depending on which citation guides you use, there's quite a bit of information out there. But what this page does is it kind of makes it a little easier to understand. So we'll talk about what citation is, how to read a citation, um, why you should have citation sources, that ever-present link to the University Writing Center because they'll help you as well. Um, here's some citation manager um, help on terms of, well, which one should I use? Do I use EndNote? Do I use Zotero? There's some really great internet resources that generate citations and you can link them directly, like citationmachine.net. It's pretty awesome. You choose the citation you want, you put in the information, and it generates the citation. So again, really useful, helpful stuff. And then there's faculty services, which you don't need to worry about unless you are faculty, and then let me know, and I could talk a little bit about that. So that's more or less the distance education library services page, but there's quite a bit of other information out there on the library page as well. So like I said, this is the main page. This is the one that you're used to. Um, you found us through looking at the upcoming workshops, or maybe you got a link from one of your instructors. These workshops, as you can see, are offered on a monthly basis. So sometimes you'll get two a month, maybe one a month, and they're in various different topics. So you know, today I'm just kind of doing an orientation about the library website, but if you want to get into more of the nitty gritty of how to do research, you can attend the Navigating the Library Databases, Library Research Basics, eBooks Training, Better Google and Google Scholar Searches in 45 Minutes, because hey, we all use Google, so we might as well use it to our best advantage, and of course Citation Tools, which is actually our most popular one, because a lot of people, including librarians, have a hard time with citations. Um, because they're constantly changing and it's hard to know which one, um, which format to use for specific subjects. So it's a really great way that you can get all the information that you need in, in, a, in a time that you're available. Because there's nothing more frustrating when you're a distance education student that maybe your teacher went over at once in class and you weren't there because you had a sick kid or a sick dog or you had to work and um, you never heard about it again. So this is great because you'll always have it. It'll always come around on your schedule. And let me just throw this out there, you guys. If for some reason it's not working for you, it's not working on your schedule, I want you guys to click this wrap session link, which is right out here on the front page. This is, what, this is probably my favorite thing about working here. What this is, is we call it wrap sessions. It's research advisory program. This is where you can arrange to meet one-on-one -on -one with a librarian for your research. So um, for instance, let me see, okay. Phaedra, please let me know if I'm not saying your name right, but you can't, you have, you were having technical issues and maybe you kind of missed the first five minutes and there was something that you really wanted to go over and I didn't go over it in, in my presentation or maybe um, you're working on this literature review or you've got this paper due and you just don't know where to start. Um, this is where the wrap sessions come in. Because a lot, we find out a lot of students, it's like when you're sitting in class and, and you're take, you're listening to the lecture and you, you're kind of thinking that the instructor thinks that you know what they're talking about, but you really don't. And you don't want to just raise your hand in front of everybody and say, well, hey, I'm not really understanding this. Uh, what this is, is this is a way where you can meet with the librarian just yourself. And you can talk about whatever you need. And you can meet with them more than once. So say you're working on this major project this semester and you got so much help with the librarian that, you know, it would be great to meet with them again next semester. You know, use the librarians as much as you want because, you know, I have a couple of students that I meet with once a month. And I'm like, hey, how'd that project go? Oh, it was really great. Good. But what are we working on this time? And we sit down and we go over all the different resources. 
because as you guys have looked at the library website, it's daunting. There's so much information out there. How on earth are you going to know what's the best information for you? So attending these workshops are good because you kind of get the nitty gritty, but at the same time, it's good just to meet with people one on one so that you can just talk about specifically what's important to you. Um, and let's face it, with a lot of distance education students, you know, we haven't been we haven't been doing research in years and things have changed since the last time I had to write a paper. And so I would just like to have a refresher course where people can show me what's out there. Um, okay, great. Yes. You guys do know the wrap session. Great, great, great. Yes. Yes. Phaedra, use it, use it. And you guys can even, you know, request me if you want, or you can request, um, anybody, uh, you guys will probably see librarians all over and there are subject specific librarians whose work is just in the subject that you're majored in. So you can request one of them as well. Uh, we're all open and we, we love getting wrap sessions, but this is basically what you'll do is you'll click this form and you can put in all of this relevant information and then you choose the choices you want to meet. So find the three times that work best for you. And then you can do a request, whether it's in person, you can do telephone, you can do web conferencing. Um, Trust me, web conferencing, I know it seems like a pain just trying to get it all together, but once it's working, it's pretty amazing. And what I love about web conferencing through the library is that we use what you guys, you've got GoToMeeting, and we can share each other's screens with GoToMeeting. Um, in fact, even those of us that are feeling particularly brave, um, we can even put videos of each other. So, hey, you want to see the person that you're talking to and not just be a voice? Um, this is a really great tool as well. Um, but I get a lot of librarians that are like, oh, gosh, no, I don't want to see me talk. And so they don't use the webcam. But that's a that's a possibility. Also, something that's really cool is that we can share each other's screens. And I'm going to show you something really cool. And, and Catherine, I'm totally going to use you as the guinea pig here. So I'm going to, um, let's see, where's my where is my um, action? Nope, don't want that. Okay, Catherine, I'm going to give you my keyboard and mouse permission. Maybe. Let me see if I can get it to work. Maybe not. Okay. Huh, I wonder why it's not working. Okay, well, never mind. Um, what you can do is you can change presenters. We can share each other's screens. So basically, okay, so say, Phaedra, you are looking at research. So I'm going to say, okay, let me see your screen. Your screen, your desktop is going to pop up, and you're going to show me how you're looking for the research, or you're going to show me the article that you found, but you're not quite sure how to cite. And I could be like, oh, okay, that's perfect. Um, this is what you need to do. Click on this link and done. It's so much better, like, okay, so for instance, Phaedra, you and I are on the phone and we're trying to like tech support and I'm like, okay, go to this page. Do you see this link? Do you see this link? And it, it can take a lot of time and it can be very frustrating, especially if you don't see the link. But what's cool about using this system is that we can see each other's desktop so we can actually be working together. And I, I just think that's awesome. So the web conferencing option is good. So don't be, you know, ashamed to ask for that one because I think that's really more um, more appropriate, especially within the distance education world. And then those of you in the education department, you guys are used to the AET zone, so you can also put in a request for that because we've got quite a few librarians that are very proficient in that. So that's just another way. And also, as much about your issues or your assignment as possible, what you'll do is you'll submit the form and you will hear back from a librarian very quickly and then you can schedule to meet and get as much help as you need. And please use this more than once because again, this is really helpful because for each class you take, that's a whole different set of resources that you have to look into and know because as much as we love Google, it's not the catch-all. Google doesn't have everything and it's not. sometimes it's not as specific as you need it to be. So we love Google, we use it, um, but we have a lot of databases. We've got a lot of really great information where you're going to get stuff that you don't necessarily will find on Google. So just something to keep in mind. And you can find the links to the wrap session on the distance page. You can find it under get help. You can find it on the main page. I mean, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, just something really cool I wanted to show you. Um, we do have links to Google Scholar because, again, people use it. What's cool about our Google Scholar, in fact, I highly recommend that if you use Google Scholar at all, go through the library website and use it with us. Because what we've got here is that we have it set up 
so that it links to articles that the library owns. So, you know, when you're getting that PDF and it's you're clicking on it and it's telling you to go to this site where if you pay them $45, they'll mail the article to you. Don't do that. Order that article through interlibrary loan. You'll get it for free. It won't be instantaneous because it will take about 24 hours, but hey, you'll get the article. Two, with this particular one, you can actually click on the PDF. Oh, I don't know why it couldn't connect. Um, well, ideally, that would work. Bad example. But you can access articles through Google Scholar as well. So again, it's just another cool tool. Like We all know that Google's being used, so why not take advantage of it? Now, this is kind of my, my favorite part because this is where I show you really cool stuff that the library has that maybe you just didn't know about. So if you click on the article, databases and e-research tools. Now, hold on, let me go back for a second. Searching through App Search. App Search is set up so that it reminds you of Google because you know we all use Google. Everybody uses it. So we have App Search so that you can feel comfortable looking for your, you know, your topic in a Google kind of way. So if I type in education within the app search box, what it's going to do is it's going to search just a fraction of what the library has. It actually does not search the entire library. So you're going to get a lot of hits and it's going to seem like you got to get a lot of hits, but it's not necessarily going to give you everything that you need to know. But with that respect, if you've never researched before and you're not quite, I mean, education is a huge topic. So this one might help you narrow down, you know, Maybe I need to do something smaller within education. But here's the basic format. So, you know, you can refine by books or ebooks or microfish or e journal. Maybe you're looking for government documents. Maybe you're looking for educational um, information that's really, really recent as opposed to um, 20 years ago. You can basically get all narrow down your hits and your searches just by looking on the left hand side. But also, too, you can kind of scroll down and see that we have. Um, microfilm, we have some art PDF articles, we have educational electronical re or electronic resources, but say I want a book on education, so I'm just going to click on book. And it is slow, just FYI. Okay, so this book looks good, so it tells me where it's located in the library, but here's what's really cool. So I'm going to click on the title. Okay, I can request it. This is how you guys are going to request getting these books sent to you. So you're going to click that requ request it button. It's going to prompt you for your banner ID and your name, and it'll give you the option to mail it to your house. So just keep that in mind. That's how you're going to want to request items. But here it does, again, it tells you where it's located in the library. But I want you guys to look down here. Do you see this button? Do you see what I see? Okay, it says cite this title. Click on that. That's going to give you the APA citation, the Chicago Turabian citation. That's going to give you the citation for that book. So you can copy and paste that citation and put it into your paper. All of the books within the catalog have that citation tool. So that is pretty awesome in regards to citation because it's so much easier just to have it provided for you without having to try to figure it out. Now, like I said, there will be some instances where you find, say you find articles in Google or you find Google Books, you're going to have to go to a citation generator to create the citation. That's cool. You know how to do that. Um, but this is a nice, easier way to, to do that site. And when we do the navigating the databases um, webinar, we go into more detail about how to use this. But I just think that's really cool because, again, cite, citation is probably one of the biggest stressors that students have to deal with. And so it's so nice when it's just kind of provided for you. So that's how you would use app search. Like I said, you can narrow down your searches to just articles, to just books, depending on what it is that you're looking for. Article database and e-research tools. This is my favorite particular site because it breaks down the databases by subject and it also breaks down databases by type. If Say you're looking for streaming music or free images or video to use for your presentations, you can click on this link and this will link you to all the different types of streaming music and free imaging and video that you can use for your, for your research. 
Um, say that you're looking for a subject. Um, maybe you're in global studies and you want to just look at the databases that are pertaining to global studies. You can click on these directly and know that you're just going to get information based on whatever topic in global studies that you're looking for. I like fun stuff because I think as, as students, especially distance ed students, because we are so serious, because we have jobs and family and, and, and going to school is, is the only thing we actually really do for ourselves, if you really think about that. Because, you know, when you get married, you're kind of doing that for your parents. And when you have kids, oh my gosh, that's your life. You have no life. But I feel that when you go to college, even if you're doing it just to make more money for your family, you're still doing something that not everybody can do. And only you can do it. And you're the only one that's going to finish and you're the only one that's going to stress out about it. And nobody's ever going to be able to understand exactly what you've gone through um, to get where you are. So, you know, be proud of the fact that you're in school and that you're doing it and know that librarians, we're here to help you. We're those people that can help you get through it. And sites like this, even though it looks like a lot and it seems a little confusing, it does make your life a lot easier because it does narrow stuff down because we all know that technology is vast. We all know that there's just so much of it that it could just be so frustrating to find anything. So by using these sites, um, we're definitely going to help you with your academic life, but have some fun. We actually have access to Ancestry.com, which means you do too. So maybe you're interested in, um, in your family's background. So go scroll down, click on Ancestry Library, and you are logged in as an Appalachian student, so you can create your own account and you can just start researching your family. Um, strangely enough, a lot of the 18-year-old students that I teach love this. They're like always on it. So, um, you know, definitely use it. Play with it. Have some fun with it. You don't have to be a history major to be curious about your family. Maybe you've got kids or maybe you're going to travel, you know, one day. <laughs> that's, that's what I always say. I'm going to go somewhere cool. Maybe you'd like to learn another language. If you click on M and scroll down and click on Mango Languages, this is a free um, language learning software that is very much like Rosetta Stone, except I think it's more fun. And you can learn all different types of languages just by using this, and it's free. You guys can download this on your iPad, and you can let your kids play with it. Like, my daughter is, plant, is working on Italian, and she loves it. So you have all these different courses, so maybe you want to learn Spanish. give you a little taste. You can also learn pirate on this, which I thought was really cool. So you can start learning. Let's do chapter one. Let's start. Okay. Check out the following conversation. By the end of this chapter, you're going to sound smarter than ever. Hola, ¿cómo está usted? Buenos días. Estoy bien, gracias. Listen and repeat the following. Hola. Which means, hello. So you can say it's really easy. It's not very complicated. Um, it's a lot of fun. Kids love it. Um, but like I said, the languages alone that they have uploaded, let's see. They've got, look at this. Look at all of these. It's, it's crazy. It's just like every language ever spoken. So you could really kind of subscribe to more than one. Um, but like I said, they had pirate. I wonder if they took that down because that was a blast. Oh, no, it's there. Yeah, learn pirate. Um, that's fun, too. Boys tend to really like that. Um, so, yeah, so we have Mango Languages. It's a really amazing resource. Um, if you look at our collections, we have a very, very thorough and awesome music library, which you have access to as well. So if you're a musician on the side and you want to get lots of information about it, you can check out our music library, and you can also check out books and stuff from those, from that particular library. Uh, we also have special collections, which is upstairs, but it's all of the history of Appalachian um, culture, of the area, of the environment. There's a really awesome collection on stock car racing, so if that's your thing, you can check out books. In fact, I will tell you guys this, it is one of the few special collections which will actually check out books. Most special collections tend to keep them inside their library and you physically have to come here and look at them. You cannot have anything sent home. Whereas this one um, will do that. They will send some of these, you know, really expensive and, and hard to find resources to you. 
So again, these are just some really cool things that the library has um, that you might not have been aware of. So with that being said, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to open up the mic if you guys have any questions. Hit me. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> um, I'm trying to just uh, figure out, you know, the, the browser, you know, how it, how it works. And the, Is mine different than yours? You I, I'm using Chrome. Which one yeah. are you using? Yeah, Chrome. But I, but I got here through the Apple Net. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Do the Apple Net. Um, I don't know. I've never never come in that way. I usually just go to library at appstate.edu. Yeah, that's what I need to, I think, save and do that. Yeah, yeah. Going through, gee, Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong, but going through Apple Net might cause all kinds of issues. Is that is that true? I don't know if Catherine can hear me, but um, yeah, yeah, Joe, in the future, just go directly to the library website. Don't go through anything else. Okay. All right. So anybody else, any questions? Is there anything you'd like me to show you? Can I ask another one? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, when I now that I can speak to you, did you enable that, or did that happen on my, my end, or? Um, no. Generally, when I speak, I tend to mute everybody because we get a lot of background noise. Um, sometimes <laughs> we had this one guy. It was like listening to Darth Vader. It was like, <gasps> and it was kind of distracting. And my dog has this tendency to bark when I, it's like she thinks I'm talking to her when I do these at home. So I know that nobody wants to listen to a really obnoxious Basset Hound. So um, what I generally do is I'll mute everybody. And then when somebody has a question, if they click on that hand raise, I will unmute them so they can ask the question. It just keeps that background noise to a minimum. Okay. I'm just going to try to do that because I wanted to see if this works. I'm going to raise my hand, I guess. Or okay. no, I don't have to, right? No, sure. Let's go for it. Click on it. I'm going to try this. Okay. Yay, Frasia got it to work. Awesome. Okay. Do you have a question? Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Let's see, do we need a library card for to check out books at the UNC system? No. Um, like I said, you can check out books through us, through Interlibrary Loan, or you can just take your app card to them and you should be able to check out books. So yeah, you just need your app card. But if you don't want to go through the trouble and you just want to have the, the books mailed to you, you can contact us through this link right here, Interlibrary Loan. And what you'll do is you'll create a username and password. So I'll put it in mine just to show you what it looks like. And what you'll do is you'll put in your request over here on the left-hand side. So say you want a, somebody's thesis or you want a book, you can click on that and put as much of the information as you possibly can. And then you'll click Submit Request. And then we process that request, we get those items, and then we send them out to you. Any other questions? Pedro, do you have a microphone by any chance? Oh, 
Okay, uh, what's your question? Oh, okay, you're giving it a shot, gotcha. Oh, I hear you. You can hear me? I can. Here you are. Hi. Okay. Hi, Miss Faith. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe you covered it already, but if I, instead of going on site to Apps Library and I see the book in Raleigh or in Chapel Hill or Fayetteville, do I need an app card, a physical card to get the book, or how do I um, do that? Well, there are two, 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 two ways you can do that. Um, you can go physically go in there with your app card and check it out. If, okay, where do, where do I get an app card? Okay, as well, I'm sorry, not your app card. It's your it's your banner ID. Do you guys have one? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's that's your library card. Your banner ID. I'm sorry, yeah. I should have made that specific. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's that's everything, and that is your library card. So as long as you have your banner ID, you can totally do that. And. Oh, okay. if, you don't physically want to go there. You can also request those books through interlibrary loan and have them mailed to your house. Okay, great, great. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, that was confusing. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The information you gave is great. So these are resources I know I'm going to take advantage of. Yay! That's I hope so, and I hope you definitely um, you guys would also come to some of the other workshops because again. We go into a lot more detail and we found too that a lot of times you'll take classes and your instructor may or may not invite a library into your class so you're not aware of all of these resources that are out there but as distance education students definitely make yourself take a wrap session a month if nothing else just to learn what else is out there because again there is so much information and you know, the one database that you love most may not be the best one to help you in another class or with another subject. So talk to the librarians. That's why we're here. And the University Writing Center as well, because they will edit. They will give you ideas. They will help you with your citation. Again, these are all free resources. And trust me, when you get out into the job world, good luck finding somebody who's going to help you write the paper and not charge you a dollar a page. <laughs> right. Right. Is it? Is it best to um, register for the webinar when it starts the way we did today? You know, Phaedra, you, you kind of helped me reevaluate that because um, while you guys are looking at my screen, I, I quickly realized that it must have been very confusing for a lot of people because you had to register through the workshop page and then you had to re-register. So I apologize profusely that you had issues with that. So I've changed it. Um, Say you want to take the navigating the library databases, you can just yeah. click from now on, you can go to this page, click attend session, and log in that way. Okay, great. Sounds good. Yeah, and that then you won't even have to worry about the other one. You won't have to worry about it. And what, what's great about this is that when you click register, they will consistently send you reminder emails. Because some of these, um, some of these are in July. So you might go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then July is a long time from now. And you might completely forget about it, but you will get these series of reminders. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's there. But you know what? Say it's July 15th and you're heading to the beach. Um, just know that this will be offered again in probably two weeks or three weeks. So this will not be the last time you see this. Okay, so great. Again, I'm so sorry you had, had issues with that. Um, but this, I think this might help considerably um, in terms of not having to worry about both sites to register through. Any other questions? Joe, you got your hand up. All right, well, seriously, you guys, you don't want me to find an article for you and make your life easier this weekend? <laughs> I think we're just starting. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to close out the school year, and, and we'll probably play around with it this weekend. Well, I tell you what I highly recommend you do just for fun. Go to the movies and DVDs, get season six of Dexter or whatever, and have it mailed to your house for free. 
and enjoy that time before you have to start taking classes again. <laughs> because we will mail those as well. All right. Well, you know, if you don't have any more questions, thank you so much for attending. Um, you guys will get a thank you email with a small evaluation. Feel free to put in your thoughts and uh, tell your friends and colleagues about us. And better yet, tell your instructors, because a lot of times they don't even know. Um, so I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. I'm going to type when you. Yeah, you guys should have you. you wait, my email was incorrect. I'm going to put my um, email up here. So if you have any follow questions later, you can send me an email and I'll be happy to uh, answer them. Can you see it in the chat box? Yeah, I can okay. see it now. Yeah, that's neat. So uh, feel free to um, send me any emails, suggestions, comments. If you, there's a particular um, webinar you would like to see that we don't have, let me know because we're always looking for all kinds of ideas. And also we're working on having specific webinars just for majors. So, you know, if you were to send me an email going, you know, it'd be really awesome if we could just have one on social work, that would help me to get it set up and to get the social work librarian on board to help give that. So thank you guys so much and have a great weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, again, we've got archive video of this. So if for some reason you would like to have it, I'm gonna post the archive video on that upcoming workshops page and you can directly link to it. Great. Awesome. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop talking and let you guys go. So have a great day. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye.